In this lecture, we will focus on chest injury. Namaste. In this lecture, we will be talking about injury to the chest. These injuries are very important because of the underlying anatomy of the chest, which includes the heart, the lungs, and the major blood vessels. Damage to these vital structures places the patient in a life-threatening condition. Most importantly, you as the first responder have the ability to minimize this risk by managing the patient properly. Now let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. Traumatic injury to the chest can be very serious due to the possibility of injuring vital underlying organs. As we can see here, the lungs, the heart, and some of the large blood vessels are underlying the rib cage in the chest area. Damage to any of these structures places the patient at risk of death. We classify the mechanisms of injury as being either blunt trauma or penetrating trauma. Blunt trauma may be due to a fall or a strike to the chest region and may fracture the ribs or sternum causing lung collapse and injury to the heart and major blood vessels. On the other hand, penetrating trauma may be due to bullets, knives, metal, or glass pieces that may enter the chest leading to substantial bleeding and organ damage. We classify chest injuries based on whether it is closed or open. In a closed chest injury, there is no break in the skin. This may be due to blunt trauma. This also may show superficial bruising or minor cuts in the chest region. This can cause internal damage that may be life-threatening. In an open chest injury, the skin is broken, which may indicate penetrating injury, such as from a knife or from a bullet. This can lead to lung collapse as air is able to seep into the lung region. When assessing this patient, we must consider the mechanism of injury. We must also assess for airway, breathing, and circulation, just as we would with any trauma patient. Finally, we will auscultate for a sucking sound, which may indicate that there is air flow out of the chest or into the chest area, possibly from a penetrating injury. Now we, we will discuss pneumothorax. Symptoms of a pneumothor pneumothorax are sharp, stabbing chest pain, which may be worse with breathing, difficulty breathing, and decreased breath sounds on the side of the injury. In a simple pneumothorax, we can see here, there may be a penetrating injury that breaks this area of the lung, allowing airflow between and causing the lung to collapse on this side. In tension pneumothorax, this is a much more serious condition. There is a break in the lung area here that allows airflow into the lung region. The air buildup in the chest cavity leads to an increased pressure upon the lungs, the heart, and the major blood vessels, which impairs breathing and the heart's ability to pump blood. The signs and symptoms that you would see with this are the same as a simple pneumothorax except the additional ones listed below, which include decreased level of consciousness, deviation of the trachea, shock, distension of the neck veins, bluish pale skin color, coughing up frothy blood-colored sputum. The management of these chest injuries includes maintaining an open airway, providing oxygen support, you must also consider whether there is a pneumothorax present. In this case, you would seal the open chest wound by applying pressure with a gloved hand or a flutter valve dressing, as shown here. The flutter valve dressing essentially allows air to escape, but does not allow air to come into the lung. This prevents a tension pneumothorax from occurring, which would place the patient at a great risk 
Also, with patients who have an open chest wound and possibly a sucking sound due to a penetrating trauma, they will likely need needle decompression to release the trapped air and rapid transport to the hospital is crucial. Important points to communicate include the mechanism of injury, vital signs, ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation, any signs of internal hemorrhage or shock, and the events that have occurred during transit, such as progression of injuries, any interventions by the first responders, and the outcomes of these interventions. In summary, it is important for us to recognize mechanisms of injury and be able to manage them quickly and effectively. Of great importance is management of pneumothorax and tension pneumothorax. Without rapid treatment at the scene, the patient is at risk of death in a matter of only minutes. These patients should be transported immediately to receive definitive treatment in a hospital setting. I hope you have found this information helpful. Now it is time for you to practice these skills so that you will be better prepared in an emergency situation. Please feel free to ask additional questions. Thank you. Dhanyavad.